We are going to talk about configuring your root certificate authority so you can add issuing CAs to it. As always, I'm Brian. I'm the shopkeeper here at Minding the Key Store where we talk all things PKI. Today, we're gonna continue talking about the offline root certificate authority, how to configure it and get it ready so we can start adding issuing CAs to that. Before we jump into that though, I'd love to hear in the comments if you could just uh, drop a comment in the thread below. Uh, what kind of CAs do you have either in test or in production? If you don't wanna talk about your prod environment, totally get it. Uh, but are you a Microsoft shop? Are you a Linux shop? Do you have some appliances? What kind of certificate authorities are you monitoring and managing and working on? Uh, we'd love to know. We're trying to work on content for the channel and we'd love to support what it is that you're interested in. So drop a comment below. As always, disclaimer, 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 what we're going through here is how to build out a very basic offline root certificate authority uh, that's not truly offline, its private keys are not being uh, protected by something like an HSM, a hardware security module. Um, you should not use this in your production environment. The decision points and the options that I'm selecting for this are very basic just for lab testing. Um, it should not be construed as a consultation or technical advice for what you do in your company. Please don't take this and use it uh, to build a production CA infrastructure. Uh, if you're not sure what those steps look like or what you should be choosing in the way of um, you know, certificate templates or hash algorithms or what kind of HSMs you should use or you know, uh, what kind of policies you should have, um, engage a technical services provider, an expert in the field such as PKI Solutions, not meant to be a salesy thing. They're a good organization. I've worked with them in the past before uh, I, I, I was directly associated with them. I had a history with them and, and they're just really good people. So find somebody like that um, and that you have good relationship with to walk you through the process because a lot of this stuff, if you oops on it, you got to start over. Okay. So now that the, the uh, disclaimer, the, the, I just, you know, I don't, I don't want to see somebody um, have to start all over again, you know, like, or have a big oops. Um, but now that the, the disclaimer part's over, let's cut over to our desktop and keep going. So we have our ADCS lab. This is our, our offline root certificate authority and cert services is running here. So let's take a look here. Um, We've got uh, ADCS Lab 19 Orca for Offline Root Certificate Authority. You can name your system anything you want. Again, this is a non-domain joined certificate authority. This is a standalone CA in the build-out process. Uh, if you're not sure how to install certificate services for an online uh online, offline, how we built this, how we installed the role. Uh, check out the other videos in the playlists. Uh, the last one back on the list is actually installing and setting up CA services, root CA services. This is the configure portion. Okay, so now that you got CA services installed, I have a document I'm gonna follow here just to make sure I'm hitting all of the steps, right? And I got some syntax because I'm a, I'm a horrible type typing person, typist. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set some values in Active Directory. So DS configure uh, for uh, in the configuration container. And again, there you can there are blog posts and courses that you can take to dig into this further. Okay. Uh, set reg command completed successfully. We, we'll show you where uh, in the registry you can check these things. Okay, so now we're going to set the uh, so that was a configuration partition. Um, now we're going to set the krill some values for the krill. Okay, so we're going to set the registry. All of these are values where, where you're running uh, cert util set registry, and this is committing values directly to the registry. You can actually go into the registry and see uh, most all of these. I'm just going to paste these in. Did I not copy it? Dang it, Beavis. Okay, so we're gonna set it for 52, and then the next uh, registry value, we're gonna set that increment, that uh, time increment to weeks. Okay. 
Okay, 52. Okay, command completed successfully. Search services may need to be restarted, um, and that goes without saying, or should be said, uh, just about any of these values that you, that you change in the registry, you're, go you're going to need to stop and restart certificate services in order for it to see the values in the registry. The registry is a point in time setting that when the operating system initializes or services restart, um, it will see those values. Um, so now we're gonna set that 52 to weeks. And again, this may not be what makes the most sense for you, for your organization, certainly may not be what makes the most sense for prod, okay? This is just a basic, super, super basic build out, okay? Okay, command completed successfully. Now, could I go and stop and restart search services on each one of these? I could, I'm gonna go through and commit all of these uh, and then uh, restart search services. Then we've got our curl overlap. There is, we, we could do a one day course on your certificate revocation list and uh, when it's published, how often it's published, what kind of strategies should you have for your overlap, how long, uh, you know, and all of those things. I am not going to get into that here. We're just gonna go with a basic four weeks. Uh, it could be six weeks, it could be six months. You, this is something for you to iron out uh, for your organization. You need to think about the services that you have and what needs to be up and operational. Okay, set reg command completed successfully. Okay, and then again, we're gonna set that increment, that time bucket to weeks. Okay. Now we're going to talk about how long will the issued certificates by the CA be valid for. And I'm going to set mine for two years. Yours could be longer than that, could be shorter than that. One of the biggest mistakes that we see with people putting things out into production uh, is that they set their, they'll, they'll set all of their certificates for maximum amount of time. So their CA certificates for 100 years and their client certificates for 30 years and um, now there, there, there might be use cases where certificates are valid for longer periods of time and you definitely should talk with a consultant about what that looks like but uh, consider that. This is the validity period of certificates that are issued from the CA. So anything downstream, so the issuing certificate authorities, uh, their certificates will be val valid for two years. The root CA certificate, when we installed the role in the last video, was good for five. Typically, your root CA certificate is uh, valid for the longest period of time. It's offline, it's secured, people are tracking how they're getting to it. Um, and then the next uh, category down as far as expiry uh, would be your issuing CAs um, and then usually your what certs you actually put out in the wild happens after that. Um, okay, so we've got some auditing things that we're going to do. Okay, so this uh, sets a registry value for our recommended settings um, for, uh, for auditing. Okay, make sure you've got your flags. Okay, completed successfully. Okay, so let's get the uh, CRL publication URL squared away. Okay. Again, making sure that you have your, he said, is he minimized? Uh, that you have your, a plan for where you're gonna be putting your CA services uh, and, and how you're gonna be publishing your curl distribution point. Okay, then we want CA cert publication URLs. That needs to be updated as well.
Again, making sure that you're keeping track of uh, CDP or come up, call it PKI, call it something. Uh, highly recommend a DNS name to have stuff published too. Okay, so we have configured um, how the krill is going to be, how often and the overlap of the krill how it's going to be published, what it's going to be called when it's published. And we're going to stop and restart certificate services. Okay, and we're going to start it. So now we take a look. That's a good sign that it said that it came back up. Let's take a look at search services. Okay. So uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can issue a CRELL. One of the easiest ways would be to right-click on the revoked uh, certificates uh, container, select all tasks, and hit publish. Um, now there's strategies around you cut a new CRELL. Is this a delta? Um, you know, I, and depending on the environment that you have built, be cognizant and choose the right one. This is a brand new environment, so we're going to cut a new CRELL. And there it is, under Windows System 32, cert serve, cert enroll. Okay, so there's some basic commands that you can run to uh, refine how your, your offline root certificate authority works uh, in order for it to be ready to start cutting certificates and issuing krills um, in a way that uh, it's easier for issuing Okay, so there's some basic offline root certificate authority configs that you can do to get your hierarchy ready for another tier. And that's the very next step in our process. We're almost done with our lab series. So we're going to have a build out of the issuing CA certificate and, and going through that, and then we'll have another config process for that. There's much, much more to this process. There's much more to the design. Uh, there's an evaluation process for your certificates and where they should be uh, and how you use them and what kind of CA services you need. So definitely research, um, but this is just a basic walkthrough on getting a couple of CAs going so you could test templates or um, auto-enroll and getting that working with Active Directory or, or some basic lab configuration like that. If you found this useful if you are enjoying this lab series and how to get things up and running and and test ca services on your own please do the the youtube things like share subscribe if you thought this was useful, you, if you thought this particular lab build out uh, playlist has been helpful, we would love it if you would do the YouTube things like share, subscribe, hit the bell notification to let you know when new stuff is coming out. We're going to be going live on a regular basis in the near future. and We'd love to have you join us. And if you hit the bell, you'll know when we go live. Uh, so we'd love it if you'd participate in that. Comment below on what you're thinking and you know what you'd like to see next. I'm Brian Roma and we'll see you next time.